Hey guys, you're listening to Bookin' It, a weekly podcast where we talk about short stories, poems, and novels. Here in the studio, we have me, Anthony, Henry, Tom, and you. This week, we're reading Ghost at a Watchman by Harper Lee. 26-year-old Jean Louise Finch, Scout, returns home from New York City to visit her aging father, Atticus. Set against the backdrop of civil rights tensions and political turmoil that were transforming the South, Jean Louise's homecoming turns bittersweet when she learns disturbing truths about her close-knit family, the town, and the people dearest to her. And now on to the podcast! So what did you guys think? Um, if you guys were given the book a number rating, what would you guys give it out of 10? I'd also give it a 5. Really? A 5? Yeah. Wow. Like, towards the end, I think it was more of a 6-7, but honestly, I think it was a 5. The beginning was too dry for you, then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we'll probably talk about why it's okay. 5 for me. I don't know. Maybe it's because I liked the first book, and I kind of liked how this one is just... It doesn't, like... Usually when sequels, I feel like they have, like, similar themes, and, like, the ideas are the same, but this one kind of, like turn what people thought of the first book on its head a little bit um so i i liked how she made it a lot different than the first book in a sense and i would give it like a six and a half out of ten i was gonna say seven or seven and a half out of ten okay yeah. like similar reasons or yeah honestly yeah i i really i liked um the dialogue between her and her father especially okay which is probably what made it me push it higher in the rating mm. No, we've all read the the first book, though, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. I would give it a seven. I would read it again. Yeah. Same same reasons as me and you, kind of. Or? Um. Well, I like to say like seven is passing. You know, six is kind of like it was yeah. good, but I wouldn't read it again. Yeah. Seven is kind of like it was good, not amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I would read it again. You know, but it's not the top. Of my list. Yeah, definitely. Six. Like that's why I give it a six and a half. I feel like a six is just kind of too like. Too barely above average. If I think average if I read it five. a second time, I could get some more, uh, just lessons out of it. I think Maybe. First time was kind of fast. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> what kind of cheese is this? It's brie. Oh. <laughs> oh, brie. I would agree that, um, I don't know, like, going off of what you said, it was kind of weird. The, I felt like the entire book, she was just complaining and being this like really obnoxious yeah. character yeah and then fine. like um after reading the first book i probably only read this book to um to figure out like what happened because mm-hmm. i feel like oh, i was really curious about that but then after i read it i'm just like i'm done with it i yeah. don't want to read it again i don't know well i don't i don't really know like why the book was like so many published so many years past the first one though i heard um that Harper Lee had um, dementia or something. Okay. And that she, I'm not sure, this is what I've heard from my coworkers, um, and that she had written it for so long, or shortly after the book, and she has kept it for so long, and then it was like f- someone found her or something like that, and she decided to finish it or publish it, and she didn't really remember her tracks or something like that. That's what I heard, Do you think but. that's why the book seems a little messy? Then? I don't know. Could be. I, but I don't even know if that fact is true. I didn't really look into that. I don't know. Maybe I haven't been reading a lot, but like the book did seem kind of messy to me too. Like, I think the idea kind of was rushed. really good, but just some parts were really not ironed out. Like that's what I'm saying. It was kind of rushed yeah. feeling. Yeah. I guess rushed. But I mean, I read that book when I was a freshman in high school, and then I don't know. It's just I was expect. I didn't have super high expectations, but I did have some because like. It's, like, the first one's, like, kind of, like, an American classic, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I had really high expectations for this book, so maybe that's why my score's so low. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Because, like, the first one, it's not only, like, a classic book, yeah. scholarly, and it's, um, you know, it has all these awards, awards, awards and t- mm-hmm. well, number one bestseller. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, New York's number one. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, I was going to say something, I forgot I think I agree that I like that it has a new theme. Well, you shouldn't write another book with the same theme. Yeah. But I like how it's more of a grown-up type of independence that it took. Yeah, I'd say, like, the overall, like, messages is 
I mean, this is kind of like a coming of age story, I guess. Would you say that it's like like that? Because like in the first book, she was like super young, and then now she's yeah. older, and she sees like the whole, you know, make home city with a different perspective, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. Yeah. Although her attitude still kind of, you know. Yeah, I felt like it was more intensified in this book. Oh yeah, for sure. I kind of found it interesting how Harper Lee made it so that. Um, Scout was the only character in the book because she killed off Jem. Dill's in another country, and yeah. Henry, I don't even remember hearing about him in I the first book. Was he in the was. first book? No, no. I, they, when they, um, when she explained it, or like in the narration, I guess, mm-hmm. it made it seem like he was still a part of their lives when they were living in the first book. But yeah. He was never mentioned in the yeah. first book. I, I, don't I, I think she either. said, I think the book said like a quote, like he spent the summers like away. And like mm-hmm. yeah. the, most of the book, last book was about their summer. Yeah, so I think right. that's why we didn't see it. It explained like that they hung out a lot and like they dated when he graduated and stuff. But mm-hmm. I was like, whoa. I guess when I, I first started reading okay, the book, I thought call. he was Dill because I forgot what Dill's name was. Oh. So I was confused. I was like, yeah. oh. for a second, I thought he was him too. Yeah, so it would make sense. Like it was just kind of confusing. Yeah. Well, because she meant to someone about like a friend since childhood or yep. something. Mm-hmm. Like that. And yeah. yeah. I guess that transition was weird for me, mm-hmm. just that she just threw in this new character, and I don't know. My question was, did they end up getting married? I don't, think I don't know. I, think I don't think they left. did. Yeah. But I don't know why, because throughout the entire book, he seemed like a pretty nice guy, but everybody's saying, oh, he's he's <laughs> trash. He yeah. picks his nose when people are looking. Because his family line is trash. Yeah. Well, I just I think... my nose both look, looking. I don't yeah. think they got yeah. married because... I mean, I eat my <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they got married because, like, I don't know, I think the agenda of the book is, like, you can see her pushing that she wants to show herself as a strong, independent woman, and with Henry being kind of, like, a kind of leader-ish figure in the town, like, leading, like, the, um, like, the, I think, the lawyer business after Atticus, Mm -hmm. I don't think she wants to be just, like, oh, the housewife of that successful lawyer guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I don't think she would have married him. Even though I think he sounds really handsome, like, his name and everything like that too. Now do you get why I want to name your, rename your nickname on the group chat, Hank? Yeah, yeah. I see now. Um. So, did you guys? Okay. For, when I was reading the first like few chapters, I I think up to part one, I thought it was really boring. Did you guys kind of like agree with that? It's yeah. kind of slow. <laughs> it was really just kind of, uh, familiarizing us with the characters. Honestly, mm-hmm. I think, or introducing new characters. But I kind of hate how, like, she, sorry, kind of hate how she just, like, jumped. It feels like she, like, her writing was so, like, sporadic. Like, she would say Henry so did something, something, and the next thing she would, like, use his nickname, Hank. And at first I was kind of like, who's Hank? Like, where did he come from, you know? <laughs> but, like, I kind of hate how she just, like, jumps everywhere. It was super confusing. Yeah, and she doesn't make it clear when she's going back in time, talking about memory, and, uh-huh. like, the present yeah. stuff. Yeah. She doesn't use page breaks. It's literally just... It could be in the same sentence. It could be in the same paragraph. Yeah. It just kind of... I don't know. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. also it felt... Well, we kind of touched on this earlier, but... Um, Scout was referred in first person and in third person. Yeah. So it just got kind of... So confusing. I don't know. It just kind of got a little cringy at times. <laughs> just trying to balance that back and forth. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't know, is it, like, when books have slow beginnings, do you guys feel like we, do you guys feel like we only push on so that we can, like, is it, we only push on so that, like, the middle and the end part is good? Because sometimes I feel like when a book is boring in the beginning, I feel like I don't, like, I should just stop reading it right there because, like, I have no interest, you know? Yeah. Like, it's hard to read on even though I know, like, the middle will get better. Right. I feel like, I don't know, sometimes I just want to stop. I can't do that. I can't just start a book and put it down and never pick it up again. Yeah, I, I mean, have I'm doing to that agree. with Moby Dick right now. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's a heavy bear, read. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The beginning is interesting, though. Yeah. But the middle... Like, oh, dude, yeah, oh I'm in the middle gosh. right now. <clears throat> I'm, like, stuck at sea right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. The but first 90 pages, they only make it clear what the plot's about in the book. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't even think the, the book had a plot until the last... <laughs> I don't know, 30 pages? <laughs> but I think this was kind of interesting, too, is that in Scout's point of view, there wasn't really a clear po- plot to begin with. You know, everything was just kind of confusing to her coming home. Kind of like, sure. it was literally just, it kind of read like a journal, kind of. Mm-hmm. How, yeah, it felt more like a journal. Like how she was, 
it was just her trip back home from New York. Like, it wasn't supposed to be, like, anything right. out of the ordinary. And then, you know, all of a sudden in the middle, like, oh, the, the car accident happened. And then that's kind of the start of the, you know, yeah. rising action. Oh, shit. when they were driving home from their yeah. little lake. Okay. Because mm-hmm. yeah. the first book took place over a entire summer, right? This last book took place over, what, four Ten... days? No, more than... No, I, I thought she was only there for two three weeks. Days. I think it was. If, I think it was, like, over a weekend-ish thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, she was supposed to be there, though, for more than 10 because, days. But it because ended when. Before. Yeah, when the book ended, she had 10 days left. Got it. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep, You're for right. sure. You're right. So, wow. A lot math. has happened. Good math. Good math. Three, okay. four days. Speaking of the last day um, in the book, mm-hmm. don't you think she was overreacting? Because she saw. Um, who was it? Henry and Atticus sitting next to some guy, and then she went on this big tangent thing. Oh, like when yeah. she get, went to get ice cream and stuff? That was before that, because she went to, to the city council meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah, It's yeah. because her whole image of Atticus has changed. She thought he was, like, not true to his beliefs in the first book that, you know, he's taught her when, he's, when she was growing up. I think that's so rash of her, like, mm-hmm. well, even, like, in the scene, like, before that, when she just saw them at the courthouse meeting, and then she's ran to get ice cream or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it shows how... Like, even though she wants to portray herself as a woman and she's old now, she's still childish because, yeah. like, she just saw her dad. Her dad and Henry didn't even say anything, like, right. super, like, oh, I support this. Or they, they just there. listen to it. And then she just, like, goes on a tantrum. And it's, like, it's so out of who she wants to be. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah. oh, this sucks. So. Well, all, all that was really justified, for me at least as a reader, when she had her conversation with her uncle the second time. Yeah. Because he had mentioned something how... She, well, she, he didn't say it directly, but mm-hmm. I could take from her view that she wasn't really fond of religion. It wasn't a huge thing for her. Yeah. But Atticus was seen as a god to her, in a way. She didn't call him that, but that's just in her belief system. That's who she looked up to for all her answers. Yeah. And I think common yeah. with people, too, were, were typically raised in religion... And that's our sense of structure. And then as we get older and we learn, we go to school and whatnot, and we get into life, we start to see the flaws in our religion. And then we were raised with a foundation. And that was so important for her because she had to find her way to have her own belief system now, aside from just the structure that she was given. And I think that was why she got so frustrated, yeah. because someone that was seen as a god to her was flawed. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't accept that he was human. So that's why... I think the explanation with her uncle made a lot more sense. But yeah. in that whole tantrum she had, it was really confusing. Mm-hmm. But I just really paid attention to that last little conversation he had with her uncle. And that explained a lot for me, at least. And that was really the big lesson for me, is that just growing up, you'll kind of just see flaws and just foundation systems that people will lay down for you. Mm-hmm. And... I think that's about life, man. Just gotta find your own path. That's true. Yeah, and I think they were alluding to that point a lot throughout the book because I remember in the beginning she was talking about how when she would do something, she would always ask, well, what would Atticus do? Kind of like WWJD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was like a really interesting plot then because in the first book, it was mainly around a trial. Yeah. But in this book, it was just mainly about her mm, yeah <laughs> I was gonna say it seemed almost like her problem or her issue with her family and stuff was almost solved at the end after she talked to her uncle the second time and I feel like that's not realistic at all I mean I'm sure it's not completely solved she's still kind of upset about it but she's grown to understand it a bit more but I just feel like would you guys, if you guys had, like, a really strong belief about something, you don't... It, talking to someone would not solve that problem, right? And it's almost like she kind of let it go at the end, and I hated that ending. Yeah. Honestly. I think she mostly let it go because she was drunk at the time. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, like, it does not happen. Mm-hmm. Like so that. I feel like, what if there's... <laughs> this is still kind of like a cliffhanger, but there's not much to go off of. Yeah. This book. If there's a third book, and then Harper Lee is, yeah. yeah, I'm not reading that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> she's dead. No. Oh, she's she oh. died. Yeah, she did. <laughs> my she, she my died before is to Harper. they released it, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Oh damn. Well, at least she didn't have to see like, you know. I mean, wait, wait, did the books 
I haven't looked on Google. Did the book get good reviews and stuff? It, you guys know. I heard it like sparked a lot of controversy. Like people either really liked it or really hated it because of the content. The Atticus thing. I think it's mostly the Atticus thing. Would you guys say is controversial? Yeah. How like he's like kind of like cool uncle a racist now. Yeah. I didn't even think that he was a racist. Yeah, in the I don't book. think it was a racist. Like, that's he why just I said went cool to uncle. Like, that's yeah. why she, yeah. like from her perspective her, he was yeah. a racist, but I don't yeah. think he was. Not necessarily a racist, but just she got the misconception of him as a humanitarian. Yeah. Just stood for humanity. But in, in reality, he just stood for, like... Justice. Just stood for justice in general, yeah. yeah. So he saw in To Kill a Mockingbird the case that this is unjust, mm-hmm. and I have to stand for that. Yeah. He didn't stand that all people have equal opportunity. And now that... Um, well, in the case of the book, the, the blacks are getting more rights, and they're trying to demand more... He doesn't want to lose his job. He doesn't want to lose the town of the black people, mm-hmm. and he's trying to protect like uh, the white, the white supremacy in a way. So now that you say that, I guess like his motives make more sense. Yeah, I don't think he's racist. I just think he wants to protect his job and protect his uh, environment and culture that he was raised in, mm-hmm. which is which is reasonable. But because Scout went far away, yeah. mm-hmm. and she had that distance from her, the lessons that she was she was raised by him by I think she still held that close to him and to see him kind of say one thing but mean another thing Mm -hmm. that was really heartbreaking to her Mm -hmm. but I do agree that I think the ending was just kind of funny even though the lesson that she learned because she had to calm down in some way so I think her uncle calmed her down by getting her drunk and then he was able to talk to her with reason Mm -hmm. rather than just Mm -hmm. yelling and screaming and then through that, she learned this lesson. But I think just that transition in there was really kind of messy. It just didn't, in a rational sense, in a real life sense, I don't think it would work. It is picture perfect, but it is a book. It's a story. And I think the lesson, would, for me at least, was shown really well. So I kind of think like um, the first book was less controversial. Um, because if you think about like the majority of people that actually spend their time like reading i would say i would say a good amount of that is like white people white older white people am i i'm just saying that out of my own thing right um but like the first book is comfortable for them because it shows like the story of a white man and his family like doing that what they can to help like a black man that's convicted falsely for rape right and it's comfortable because like oh like we are helping each other out right but as soon as this narrative of the story turns into oh white people aren't all good that's what sparks so much controversy because they kind of like mirror themselves in that position and they're like oh well that's not true because all white people are good so like i kind of feel like the people that saw this book and reflected it on themselves it kind of like made the reviews go down in a sense you know oh as in they felt attacked. they felt they felt attacked because it's not comfortable for them the story doesn't oh, fit their gosh. narrative like they just want to think they're good people and the thing we have to realize is especially the story of this book all people are flawed. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's kind of why it's a little bit controversial, you know? Yeah. I think that's interesting, too. And I think that's also really interesting at the end, yeah. even though she was, in her eyes, right. Because she stood for humanity. She uh-huh. stood for equal uh, treatment of everyone. She was still wrong in the way that she was narrow-minded. You know what I mean? And it still showed that despite her being right, she's still wrong somehow. Yeah. And... I think that you saying that we're all flawed somehow is really interesting. And that's an interesting point, though, man. But that, how is it? I, I, don't see, think it's, I don't think it's an interesting point, because I thought that was kind of like the main message of the book. Though. I can see if I was like an elder white man reading this book. Yeah. I would feel a little bit like, eh, I hate this book. Yeah, like, <laughs> so, for yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah. But I don't know how you can say it's an interesting point, because I kind of thought it was like the main message, you know, of the book. Like, Oh, no, uh, I mean the interesting point is in, like, why it got bad reviews. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, yep. So would you read the book again? Can I read the book again? I don't read books twice unless, like, it's, like, an, an 8.5 out of 10, dude, <laughs> okay. so no, no. See, like, with this Kill a Mockingbird, I thought there was, like, a lot of little cool quotes and a lot of cool little like t- lessons t- in it. Lessons? Okay. But with this book, there was just one lesson, at least that I saw, okay. what one main part of it the rest was just kind of building up towards that yeah so i don't know i would read it again if i didn't have anything else to read 
how about we take a step back a little bit because we're kind of getting really into the nitty-gritty how about let's just talk about like what you guys thought about like the setting of 1950s Maycomb County and stuff honestly I would probably probably like it more if Jem was alive and Dill was in town that would have been like the true reunion yeah that would have been cool but obviously she if to make the book more about Scout she had to kind of get those people away yeah I thought it was interesting the way that she portrayed Jem, um, or Jem's ghost, I hate how I she guess. killed him off in, like, one sentence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that was brutal as shit. No, like, half a sentence. <laughs> you had to share, like, <laughs> yeah. the reason of his death was, like, because of his mom. That's what it was about his mom. It just happened to say, oh yeah, Jem had the same condition. Like, what the hell, man? <laughs> We're standing in the same spot. <laughs> I know. It's, I don't know, it was interesting, but... I was, yeah, she kind of built the suspense, like, dude, why did Jem die? I was yeah. thinking that for the first half of the book. I was like, what in the world? Uh-huh. And then, I don't know, I just, yeah, why did Jem have to die, man? He was such a cool kid. And then I was so confused when Henry picked her up at the station, because all of a sudden he kissed her. I was like, who is this person? Been yeah. I thought she was single. Right. Yeah, me too. She's, she is single, technically, yeah. but you know how I explained the relationship when they were younger, that when he graduated and stuff, they've been going on dates every time he would come back home for the weekends. So they were Not kind reversed. of like on and off. Yeah. And then they went to prom together and all that stuff. So I think they were kind of dating, I guess, but it wasn't like... Hashtag fling. Yeah, it was like a fling, and you know, he was really the only guy she had a crush on back in the day, and kind of he stuck with her, and so it made sense, sort of. I kind of did like the train picking up scene because, like, we were all expecting Atticus, and then when we see a new guy, we kind of like we realize, like, oh, something's wrong with Atticus, and it kind of like shows, like, how she was kind of like she always looked up to her dad, and so like now there has to be like a new guy that she could potentially look up to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It kind of like tra- like transfers the like the male figure in her life a little bit. That's she like didn't I kind of. Uh, like, she didn't look up to Henry, but I I kind of. Do you think it was a little bit of foreshadow? Kind of like the a little... end of just saying like, you know, maybe Atticus isn't isn't gonna be around forever, and yeah. you can't keep looking up to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Be- because on the train ride, she was expecting to see him like have yeah. that offset from mm-hmm. the yeah. from the train With station. the conductor guy. Yeah. So, yeah, I do like that she like you didn't know who Hank was and stuff because it makes you want to keep reading and just find out. So. But then when Hank was there, it was like, where's Jem? <laughs> yeah, There's just, like, real. too many things, I think, that left kind of a mystery that made you want to keep reading. There's too many aspects that it just made it like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. And so, and then she just killed off Jem randomly. I'm like, oh. Do you guys uh, remember any of the Coninghams or the Cunninghams from the first, the first book? book? I don't think they, it was they, that. I don't know. Was it? I don't remember anything. Wasn't about the them. young Cunningham the one that uh, came over and kept pouring um, molasses on his food? Oh, was that it? I think. Oh, I don't know. I barely remember the first. I don't want to say, can't say anything bad, but like... yeah, maybe because the the people in the court case were the Yules, right? It wasn't the. How do you remember this? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I have my coffee. Now right that you home, mentioned I molasses, remember. I remember vaguely. Yeah, that, like she I thought was it was so weird. Him. Yeah, She's like, yeah. Dude, what do you need molasses for? But, dude, that's actually a really interesting point too, though, that my English teacher in high school brought up to me, man. Of, what? Like what the symbolism of him using so much molasses was. What was it? It was just for, like poor people because they don't have. Oh, good so th- ways to cook their food. So the so taste th- of the molasses had to like cover out how crappy like the food actually was. Well, no, no, no. The, the food was good. In, oh, okay. In the Finch's household, but um, because he was raised in Cunningham, he, he was poor, so he's always accustomed to pouring a lot of molasses or hiding. That's why it would be like sriracha or something. You know soy I mean? sauce. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, just Dumped drenching it in something. Yeah. yeah. But then, with him, he's so accustomed to that that just out of habit, he just poured it on there. Oh. And she's like, "What the fuck are you doing, man?" And he's like. Speaking of food, what do you guys think about Cal? Calpurnia? At the oh, end? Oh, Did she shake her head no or yes? I think she, she shook her head no. yes. When you, what? I feel like with that specific, the choice of wording there, mm-hmm. she said shook. And when I think of shake or shook, I think so, shaking no. Okay. Wait, so nodding, what? So, uh, what? nodding is yes. This is shaking my head up and down, though. Yeah, no. Because I read it that way too. You read it as yes. 
Well, I've read in, like, other contexts where shaking your head means yes, too. Oh. Okay, so, so, for the podcast, what happens in the book is that, um, what happened? Finch, no. Scout, Scout asks Capernia if she hated them or not, and you think she shook her head no? Yeah. That she didn't by hate them? a choice of word, honestly. Okay. No, she did hate them. Oh, wait. No, no, she didn't. Oh, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, I agree with you. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I agree that she did not hate the Finches yes, at the okay. end. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I want to find that, too. Oh, as in, yeah, yeah. Then why would she oh. I agree. But you guys... Okay, so the, the words that she chose to write was she shook her head. That's it. Yeah. And what you when you... We were just talking about shaking and shook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys said yes, though. Dude, I'm shook right now. Why was she so, so? Why was she overreacting so much? Who, Calpurnia or uh, Scout? Because no, all of a sudden in the Cause... book, she's just asking her a question. All of a sudden, she starts freaking out and shaking her something. Was that right after she shook her head? No, no, no. This was before. This was like before oh. she left. Oh, because well, then... don't you guys remember? She was just asking her a simple question. All of a sudden, she's like, "Cal, where are you? Cal, why won't you look at me?" I and honestly thought she was out. dying at that point. Wait, no, <laughs> that's what I thought too. I thought she was having a stroke. Yeah. <laughs> I, when, she thought, when she said that, I thought she was like unconscious or yeah. something. And, but then I don't think she was because then her son came in and they were talking or something. Yeah. I'm thinking that's just awkward as fuck. Like there's like a bunch of people in the same room and she's like, no, 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 it, there no, wasn't was other separate. people in the same room. It was separate. Wait, I thought, she, like, I, thought she had, I thought she had to, like, go through all the people, On the though. outside of the house. Yeah. To, to enter the Wait, house. then why, would, why weren't they in the house with Calpurnia? No, okay, they were in the house, and then Calpurnia was in a different room. Oh. Uh, kind of like a living room. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Might be, might be. Dude, I think it's all in the context of just the story of why Calpurnia was acting like that, and that's what threw her off. It's because so there's the black movement, mm-hmm. and there's all these black spokesmen talking to the blacks saying... These white people are trying to fucking take our rights and stuff like that. We're human too and stuff like that. So, so they're all trying to push this propaganda down their throats. And the black people are just like enraged. So they think that white people are all against them. Because that's just the propaganda. Like their brothers are telling them. Like fellow black men that are well educated. And then on the white side of things, they're listening to propaganda that, oh, these N-words are coming in and they're trying to get their own rights and stuff. So it's this constant clash. And Calpurnia, she... I think fell victim to the black spokesman. Like absorb some of it. Right. Well, and it's hard not to when same with Atticus though. He's standing for his side of things. And it's a it's a hard battle and then Scout's just kind of in the middle of this because she grew up with Calpurnia, seen her as another mother. Mm-hmm. And then to come back into her house and have Calpurnia treat her as in the context, I, I think it said something that Calpurnia treated her like uh, an honored guest. But to Scout's eyes, that was disrespectful because she was seen as family. You shouldn't treat me with the respect of a guest. I'm not. Yeah, like a and she was kind of team. like she was kind of oblivious to everything throughout the entire book. Right, and cause... I think that's why we're we as readers are kind of oblivious to all this happening. So it's confusing. But I think maybe Harper Lee is trying to build an effect that we're confused with her. Oh, and yeah. if we do yeah. follow the idea that this is written more in the journal context. Then I think she wrote it in a rightful sense. But, yeah, so I I guess the more I piece these together, it makes sense, like, why I was confused reading it. And by the end, everything just kind of made sense after she got drunk. And I was like, dude, I feel kind of drunk too, but, like, all these are coming clear now, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I agree. Oh, yeah, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Does your okay. visitor agree to me? <laughs> do you think her uncle got her drunk so that she would calm down, or do you think that it was more of a pain reliever because he hit her? I think both. Because honestly, I thought I it was mean, more because it was like medicine. Almost. Probably everything. Like, it's a, it's a suppressant, so um, I don't know. If she's feeling pain; it's probably gone away. Mm-hmm. Um, and for her to relax, but then also, like, at the end of the day, after everything that's happened, she just needs a drink. Yeah. <laughs> just... Well, and that's what her uncle was saying, too. He's yeah. like, oh, uh, yeah, I need a drink, too. So, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys talked about this, but I was gone. Um, but, like, 
do you guys know the story in the book how like she helped Scout after her first period and stuff? Like how she's kind of that was hilarious. That was so funny. Birds and the bees, baby. No, I thought it was so funny when she thought she was pregnant. She had to kill herself. I just can't. Oh, dude. Oh no, dude. But one part that I was just really thrown off was the end of I want to say part three or something, where it said Scout was born in disorder. She's colorblind, and I thought she was dead ass colorblind. But it's just more of like a how do you say like a metaphorical sense for the way that she views people. Uh, in a colorblind. In like a black or white sense. Okay. Yeah, like but, she doesn't see color in people. Yeah. She sees um She sees them she for sees, their intellect and yeah. their differences in uh looks, I think what she yeah. said. Yeah. Um but okay, as I was gonna say, um Oh, like do you guys feel like oh and then versus like her Copernia being like really nice to her, being kinda like a mother in that sense? Like versus like when she uh was like mad at uh the Finch family for I don't know, being white in the in the later part of the book. Mm-hmm. Um, does Copernia feel like she's a mother figure to Scout, or like, or what kind of happened to like make that like sudden change from like you know being that like motherly figure into now like kind of like almost do you hate me kind of has to be asked to Copernia. You know what kind of happened in between there? Well, I kind of said earlier okay. when you were doing a thing. But, uh, I'll just touch you up. All right. Um, because there's a big black movement and a big white movement, okay. um, and the black spokesmen are all speaking for the blacks, and they're just kind of saying, like, oh, the whites are trying to push us down and not give us our jobs, and we have rights now and whatnot. Like, we should really be stepping up. Kind of like the um, just um, human rights movement and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then on the white side of things, they're, they have their own spokesmen that are just feeding them propaganda that's just saying, like, oh, we need to keep the blacks in their place, they're going to come in and they're going to take over our towns, they're going to rape our kids and whatnot, like, all this all this stupid stuff. But on both sides of things, I think Calpurnia, even Atticus, they're falling victim to this this cult that they're forming on each side. Mm. And the farther they fall in, the more they see the other side as just the enemy. And it's hard to get out because they're just... Yeah, and once Calpurnia stopped working them for so long, I think, it just caused her to just view Scout in that kind of guest mentality and not yeah. family anymore so that's what kind of, that's why i kind of saw not just like the um the black movement but like all of maycomb itself i feel like the people of the county they're so like they're such a hive mind you know and they like they're so unwilling to change from their ways like when the church thing when the conductor wanted just to change like the way like the song was being sung and everyone else was like singing it like the same old way they were refusing to change it kind of just shows like like these people from where they are they don't change like they they can't comprehend like things like moving around them you know and it kind of shows how stuck in the past they are kind of a conservative mentality yeah in a sense. Like, yeah and that's a really good point that you bring up because i think in the book um henry was talking about living there and he says um you can live in Macomb, but you have to conform to its customs mm-hmm. right. yeah and that's why Henry argued with her that he doesn't have a choice you know he was raised he had to work for everything he has to take on this this um this image for himself or else he'll just wash up what was ironic about that is that it does make sense that he says that and that he kept telling her how she doesn't realize how privileged she is right mm-hmm. do you guys agree with that like, yeah because that their family's <clears throat> southern royalty basically so, right but then what we had said earlier in the conversation about Atticus saying that he's just doing it because he doesn't want to lose his job and stuff, don't you think that's ironic that he is, like, reacting in the same way as Henry is, trying to save himself when he's technically pri- privileged too because he's her father, and that's within the family? I think you said that again. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't I, understand. I, I got it, but you can... Okay. Well, how, well, how did it relate to Atticus? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Just say the whole okay. thing, sorry. So, Include the Hank, Hank part. Okay, so when you said um, how Hank was arguing with uh, Scout, saying mm-hmm. um, he, he has to work for it and to get accustomed to the um, to the town's norms, I guess. Yeah. Um, and he was trying to make Scout realize that she's privileged, like she doesn't understand how privileged she is compared to him. So yeah. he's like kind of trying to save his life here, right? Yeah, yeah. But earlier in our conversation, we were talking about her argument with her dad, Atticus, 
um, we were saying how Atticus is really just doing this to save his job, to save his life, you know, all that stuff. And that's basically the same reaction that Henry is having. But Atticus is Scout's dad, and if Scout's privileged, Atticus should be privileged too, because they're in the same family, and that's yeah. the royal family. Like, what D- Doesn't said. it kind of make sense that Henry thinks the same thing as Atticus, because he's kind of like Atticus's mentor Yeah, but he's not part of the family, so he's not as... But he thinks he kind of actually like he's part of the family because they say like Atticus is like his dad figure though. Right. Well, so then shouldn't he not worry about being accustomed to the? Oh. Uh, you know. Yeah. But like, what do you mean Atticus? Like, in what context was he trying to justify? With the whole thing where well, she's like, freaking out. Um, and... Henry is a Clinton, right? Yeah. And the Clintons are known to be trash. Right. Right. So, and um scouts of finch and finches are known to be like very i don't know like southern royalty right, they're right. really famous in Macomb. they're known for being like very high class yeah um henry is saying that finch can do whatever she wants to because she's a finch i mean scout can scout, do <laughs> scout can do whatever she wants to because she's a finch whereas henry has to um conform to its ways because he's a um clinton so he has to be he has to be on his best behavior all the time yeah um, what Nyu is saying is that, um, Atticus shouldn't have to worry too, but yet he is worrying, because mm-hmm. he's a finch. But what is he worrying about? Like, with that's the what whole, I when they were in court, when him and Henry were in court with that one guy yeah. that wanted mm-hmm. to, like, go to trial with, you know... He the, had a funny last name. I forget, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she, when she saw them together with that guy that she is opposed to, you know, supporting... She was freaking out and stuff, and then he was, when she argued with her dad, he was saying, you know, I, that's what I have to do, I just have to, I can't lose my job, I can't, this and that, and you shouldn't worry because he's a finch. So that's why I thought it was ironic that him and Henry are reacting in the same way. Oh. Does that well, make sense? I don't think Atticus ever was trying to defend his job or anything. I think it was just something he believed in, is that he thinks that, well, he, it's not that he he's scared of Oh, he he is scared of losing his early. job, but not in the sense that he is scared to stand up for black people. It's just that he doesn't want to stand up for black people because he is trying to protect what he believes in, in a sense. Do you know what I mean? Is is he... Is, like, Atticus more... Would, would you say... Okay, let me ask this first. Would you say Atticus is more of, like of a pro-white mind now than he was in the first book, kind of? I think he's still the same. I see. But but it's I, hard to see that. It's hard to see that. But I think one reason that it could be like this is because, like, in this battle of race at this point, there's only two sides, pretty much, right? There's only black and white, right? right? So if Attic... Like, every, all the black people are pushing against him. No matter, like, your skin color, no matter... Like... No matter how nice you are to these people, if you're from the opposing race, like, they always see you as that, because you can't change it. Like, yeah. even, like, Scout, she's been with Calprinia for, like, years and years, and, like, almost like a mother to her, right? But And the the, the town must know that, because everyone's, it's a small town. But, like, it, when she comes up to Calprinia's house, like, everyone, like, moves away from her, and they take off, I think, maybe they, they took off their hats or something. Yeah, as if she's happened. royalty or something. Yeah. And it kind of, like, I'm thinking, like, Atticus is acting that way because, like, if you're not black, then you have to be white in this scenario. I don't know. Hmm. I just think Atticus doesn't necessarily... is the same mentality as Scout. And Scout is frustrated in that way. So he's not trying to cover himself. Mm-hmm. He's following the cult because it's going to better himself. Because he doesn't believe in, like... Well, this is my interpretation of it, is that he doesn't feel like he needs to believe in 100% equal um, amongst race. I think he believes in justice, and you saw that in the first book. But you, but Scout, as well as the reader, is misinterpreted. And I think that's so cool, is that you relate so much to Scout in how disconnected you are from this um, updated society in that Scout misinterpreted his actions in the first book of standing up for, I don't remember what his name, like Tom, the dude with like one arm. The rape. Yeah, yeah. Accused rape. Yeah. Um, 
that Atticus stood up for him because it was just. Because he, he wanted to serve justice. But Scout misinterpreted it as um, he stands up for all humans. Like, every human should be treated equal. And Atticus, isn't, that what, isn't that what justice is? I'm kind of... No, justice is um, What's right? lawful and constitutional. You know what I mean? And then isn't Atticus. it is it not the Fourteenth Amendment that like some shit like we shall be treated equally? I think in the context of this book, the Fourteenth wasn't written yet because they were talking about I mean, like, how 19, how annoyed they were I mean, that like, this Tenth Amendment was about to be written. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, so so this is all before that. Yeah, yeah. So you have to think about. Oh, because Brown versus Board was just re- yeah. or just recently. And Atticus agrees that he thinks God loves all people. He, he and I think I remember reading something about how well maybe the the blacks should just stay in Africa and we'll stay in America and things will be solved better, you know. And that was kind of the mentality that okay, still I believe in justice, but I don't think we can all survive together in this. And Scout sees it as, okay, if a black man's smart enough, if he has, a, um, if he's given the opportunity, he can succeed in this life, and he should be able to. Mm-hmm. But Atticus just doesn't want the blacks to over, overflow as well as the society may come to. That's kind of how I interpreted it. No, I don't. I don't even think. I don't think Atticus is like that. I just think he just kind of converted to the hive mind of Maycomb. That's what I think happened. Is that interesting how it's like Maycomb too? It's almost like a honeycomb. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. I don't think it was like that. Symbolism thought, shit. But, All right. Uh, well, now that you bring that up, it kind of, it's almost like Harper Lee put a 2008 mindset in 1950 or whatever. Yeah. What do you mean? Because we have Scout. That's um, she's a humanitarian. She sees all people as equal. Mm-hmm. She, you know. All that stuff. She's colorblind. Yeah. <laughs> and she's almost put in a society where it's not like that at all around her. Yeah. I and see. I think no matter what, there's always going to be controversy. And, and it kept, well, not kept, but there was one time where it just said, where her uncle said something about how history repeats himself, repeats itself. This will occur again, but just with a different medium. And that's why it feels like even today we can relate that there's so much controversial. Um, subjects that go on revol- revolving humanity mm-hmm. and I think voices like Scout that stand for just everyone should receive equal rights that's just in her eyes would you guys say like okay so branching off that a little bit would you guys say like the publishing of this book in what 2014 I think yeah. 2015 was that like a good timing like based on like what happens in the book like does the story kind of fit our modern timeline um, considering it's supposed to be a sequel it's like an old ass book I don't even know that shit was published like 1970 something maybe 80 something I don't know well I'm not sure if the timing of the book was intentional because To Kill a Mockingbird took her 10 years anyways this book took another I don't know how many other, ever how many years yeah yeah hmm I don't think it was intentional. Yeah. What would you say, kind of like, the plot line, the story, is it, is it, is that good, like, mold towards, like, the current issues and things happening in our society now, though? I would, I think maybe in 2014, a little bit more than now. Because I think back in 2014, things on, like, a humanitarian view of things, things were kind of controversial then, revolving, like, um, gay rights and stuff like that, and, um, I think back in 2014, in that context, yeah. people weren't receiving equal opportunity, and even though today there's still bias and stuff like that, it's starting to iron out more clear to people that, okay, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are, you should still deserve equal opportunities. And in the context of, like, the black and white separation, Mm -hmm. during that time, no one could see that clearly either. Mm -hmm. They just wanted what benefited themselves and didn't want to help the other. But then the people that stood for humanity, in a sense, (laughs) then they they ended up helping solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe, I don't even remember, like, what year, what 
time, like all this controversy was going on, but I don't think the book was intentional in the time it released. Yeah. I feel like it'll always be applicable as long as there's still a mindset that there's separation. Yeah. Even if it is unconscious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it wouldn't matter if it was released 2014, 2018, um, Maybe even, like, 2001 when 9-11 happened. Yeah. Yeah. Even, well, in the beginning of the book, when she said to her aunt, that little, little scout, I mean, asking her aunt if she thinks it's a good idea if she married Hank or Henry or whatever you want to call him, and she started to just trash on this dude. So, oh, he comes from trash and blah, blah, blah. I think that's an interesting other way to show this same theme. It doesn't even have to be about color. You know what I mean? There's just this bias of just how, because someone comes from this past, mm -hmm. this is their, their blood, what's in them that they can't change. Yeah. No matter how hard they work to become a man today, yeah. that's still held to them, and they're trash because of that. Yeah, and she and um, her aunt, Alexandra, even mentions things that we do, like lick your fingers, yeah. um, pick <laughs> your nose when people aren't looking. Like, yeah. those are just things that everybody does. I mean, how do but you she clean says, your nose if you don't pick it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and then she just says, oh, yeah. and she probably Henry has, does like, it because he's a Clinton. Yeah. yeah. That's oh. a good point. It's yeah. kind of like, I like that because it's very similar to like a message um, in Naruto where like there was a, a big fight scene and um, the, this one guy's a genius and then he says to the other guy like, um, no matter what, like destiny is destiny and you can't change that. You can't beat me. And then like in the, it was a tournament, you know, it was really deep. And then he whooped his ass. And like and Naruto whooped his ass at the end. I'm like, yes. So yeah, I do like, I do like the connection though. It was really good. And then, um, was it the the uncle that said, marry your own kind? Incest. Like, love who you will, but marry your own kind. <laughs> yeah, is that, I think more of a political standing, or more of, like, belief system. Because if you don't, then someone's going to have to conform. And someone isn't going to be fulfilled in that way. Maybe. I don't know, man. This book's a mystery. Did Would, you? <laughs> wish she was still alive to ask her. I know. Excuse me, Miss Harper. Or Miss Lee, I mean. Um, did you guys have, like, what was your guys' favorite part of the book? Favorite scene, I guess. Honestly, when they were telling that story about, um, <laughs> Scout being pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, was that, was really funny, yeah. that was probably the only time I laughed throughout the whole book. Yeah, I know, it was kind of grim. Yeah, she was in, what, 7th grade, 8th grade? Dude, yeah. 6th yeah. grade, 6th grade. Something like and that. And then, um... She was asking all of her friends or all of her classmates, like, how Supposedly do you get friends, how yeah. do you get pregnant? Like, what's a baby? What's pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> what's a pregnant? Oh, that video <laughs> with, like, all those pronunciations. Yeah. yeah. And then, mm -hmm. um, it was like, when a boy sticks his tongue down your, in your mouth. Yeah. And then she just and added, like, like, oh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then oh, she's doing pregnant. the math, but then she's like, wait, <laughs> it happened four months ago. <laughs> she's like, I'm oh, due no. in five months. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. And she's on top of that water tower. Like, <laughs> yeah, like imagine if she uh, did do it. <laughs> that is crazy. I like the um the scene where they go, the Henry and her in the river together. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Finch's landing, right? Yeah, they went to the river or the body of water. I forgot it was a river. Do you guys not remember? Honestly. They went into the creek with their clothes on, and it was this big oh, controversy. Yep, yep, okay. I don't know. I just kind of liked it because. It, Maybe I'm nostalgic about my own summers, but, like, I don't know, I just felt like in that moment, like, she was just kind of happy, and it, the book is a grim as shit throughout, so, like, this one happy moment is kind of, like, mm. it's, like, oh, she's, like, with someone that she, that she loves, and she, you know, admits that she loves him, and, like, they're just having their own good time in the water together, and just appreciating, like, the summerness and how she's home, you know, um, but, and then the message of the book comes, and, like, everyone thinks that they're naked and, like, having an affair and shit, you know, mm -hmm. But hmm. I, in that moment, I really thought it was kind of like a nice, peaceful moment mm -hmm. compared to like the shitty grimness of the book. Yeah. yeah. I think it was kind of put in there to show that um, Scout still wants everything to be like it was when she, was when she left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because the book is called Go Set a Watchman, and the Watchman is supposed to see changes out there. Because that scene kind oh, of... I didn't know what a Watchman was. Oh, yeah, me neither. <laughs> I thought it was like the name for like something that's oh, no, no, no. time. Don't you remember during the sermon, they were... They said the Bible quote. Goes yeah, but, but I just didn't know what like it was. Watch, wait, wait, what's a watchman? A watchman's a person like 
on top of a mountain or on top of a castle that overlooks everything. To make oh, sure kind of in coming. like Which... in the big towers. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh. To make sure nothing's coming. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have but, a follow up question after that. Oh, oh but lo- okay, yeah. But Loki, like that scene, just kind of read like the first book in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like you, it kind of sounded like she was like a kid again, you yeah. know, which I liked. Oh, you can and say. Now that you say that, I'm thinking about. I think my favorite edit, any part of the book that I liked was when she was talking about the past. I because I love, liked all those yeah. funny stories with kind her playing make believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hated that part and where things she. Things are simple. I hated the part where he, her, and Jem and Jill were playing that one like, they were like. Uh, they're like doing that one game where they're like uh, pretending to be yeah, like yeah. the revival. I thought it was really like, kind of like confusingly <laughs> weird. Yeah. Like he would be like, "Do this shit and say it," yeah. <laughs> and then she she'd do it. I'm like, okay. It's, no, it's like what Dom. Imagine... It's like what Dom used to do to us. He used to like make scenes for us. Remember yeah. that? He'd be like, "So Tommy's like jumping on top of like Anthony's Jump. face." Right, right. And, it just seemed kind of like a weird scene to me. But from know. the outside looking in, though, if, if you were like an adult just standing on your porch watching these kids play, you'd be so confused. You're like, what the fuck are these kids doing? <laughs> yeah. but do you guys so I think it makes sense the way that she wrote it. But do you guys remember when Dill comes in the sheet and they're like, what the fuck are you supposed to be? And he's like, yeah. I'm the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was so funny. I thought it was so funny. Jeff was like baptizing his sister and stuff like that. I was like, what is going on? This is so funny. It's like Holy Ghost or KKK. Like, <laughs> no. But uh, Loki in that scene is also weird because her ass is like naked and like the priest comes and shit. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? Oh yeah, but you could say you're, you're nice oh, yeah, when you said, um, the whole, like, explaining to them what a Watchman was, I was gonna ask you guys what you guys thought about the cover, and I don't know if you guys ever think about this, but, like, do you ever, like, think, look at a cover and think of what the story's gonna be, like, or based sure. around? Because I'm really confused as to, I know she came on a train, but I'm curious as to why this is kind of, like, the focal point of the cover, and not a Watchman. Well, you know what they say, always judge a book by its cover, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a full picture. It is a full picture. I think it's picture, just her train well, coming into town, mm-hmm. that's all. Now that I haven't actually seen the title because I torn to the book. <laughs> but I'm seeing this tree, and I think it's that tree from the first book, right? Yeah. And then you see oh, yeah, a the bird cover. right here. The bird is leaving. Oh, the mockingbird? Yeah. Ah. A homage. Oh. Nice. And then you see Makeum. But then it's like nothing like the first book. Oh. <laughs> Well, I don't know why the train. I don't know. I don't think. I, I, she did, came in. She does a cover the train. Even, does a cover even have some like symbolic meaning or something? I don't. Or think I was just, just gonna ask like, you guys. Like, do you fir- think? I want to know like why they named it Go Set a Watchman. Like, like what does that mean in, in context it, with to the book? Um, the theme. Well, he was explaining to you guys what a watchman was, and that they, I know, they view everything. I and mean, see we the know what a watchman is, but like. So exactly, like, didn't she was surprised when she came back? Like all these changes that happened. That's just showing that. Okay, she doesn't have a watchman, but all these changes are happening in front of her. Yeah, because no like, she even said she wished she would. Yeah, there's like this one part where she said she wished she had a watchman, like whoever the person that was mm-hmm. that had it. Okay. And um, e- even in the end, she didn't think that. Uh, she was really surprised when she thought that Atticus, Atticus changed, mm-hmm. her uncle changed, all these people are changing. Yeah. Okay. So, hence, watchman. Hmm. Oh. oh, did you guys have a favorite scene? Well, we already talked about that. I think aside from the ones they mentioned, I would just say the one that I mentioned earlier with okay. um, how she talked to her aunt, and her aunt was just flaming the dude. Yeah. Man. <laughs> but just reflecting on that after I've read the whole book, even though the... I mean, maybe some people are still racist, whatever, but even if that doesn't exist, there's still people who just have a narrow-minded mentality that even at times, I see myself thinking, like, oh, this person's family came from, like, this. They're probably going to be like that, too. I shouldn't associate with them. But but in my mind, my experience with them is still good. But I still have this bias against them because of that. And it just shows a lot that through reading this story, that you shouldn't shouldn't judge someone based on uh, things that they can't change. You, you know what I mean? Like, if I judged Anthony because he had a weird-looking nose... He can't change. Well, nowadays he can, but in a sense, he can't change out about himself. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't be forming prejudices against him uh, based on things he can't change about himself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. That's kind of the theme I took from the book. Mm -hmm. So that's why I asked, like, go set a watch, but what does that have to do with that theme? And I can't Mm -hmm. really relate that. Wish I could ask Harper Lee. (laughs) Rest in peace. Mrs. Harper Lee. Miss Harper Lee. I don't know. (laughs) 
But yeah, going along with what you said, um, <clears throat> I think another takeaway from this book is that you should judge people more on what their beliefs are and what their, um, you know, what they have in their head versus what how they look or let's call it their skin. Yeah. yeah. Is there... I just kind of hate how, like, uncertain, like, Scout is at times, you know? She's like, she's like, oh, should I marry Henry? Should I not marry him? Like, oh, should I, should I go, to, should I stay in Mount Maycomb? Should I go to New York? Or should I be in New York? It's kind of like, she's so wishy-washy. I mean, That's I what I thought. it's typical of, um, you know, an adult's mind, a young adult's mind. I mean, I think Don't like you, that. Yeah, you know? At times. I almost felt like she wanted to marry him out of spite of everybody else, because everybody else is saying, oh, he's <laughs> trash, and that only made her want to marry him even yeah. more, I felt like. Yeah. Just... I mean, he was her first love. Yeah. That's the reason. I mean, he did save her life. Well, technically, the guy that saw her on the water tower saved her life by telling <laughs> Henry to go. <laughs> hey. I'm like, why didn't you just go up there yourself, you know? Boo Radley wasn't in this. Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah. They mentioned him once. I didn't even I see it. I didn't even it. see him. Yeah. They did. I don't remember where, but it was somewhere in the beginning. Man, I don't, think I don't so, remember man. that dog. I don't, I, like, I'll find like it. you said it, so I was like really reading carefully. Like, all right, Arthur Radley, where where you at? And I didn't see him at all. I promise you. Guys. Radley was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were trying to roll up like all whited out. Is Boo Radley? So, um, closing thoughts? You guys have your opinions changed by yeah, discussion today? Change or re rate the. <laughs> I the think book? I give it a six now. Only because I didn't see the big takeaway before because yeah. it was really dry in the beginning. Yeah. So you bumped it up one point, right? You had a five? Yeah. All right. I bumped it up from five to five yeah. to six. I'll keep my score six point five. Like, it was a decent read, but it wasn't, like, amazing or anything. It was still a little bit thought provoking. Yes, at times. I would say seven because the lesson in it is really valuable to me. And along the road, I think I'll fall away from this lesson. And I would read this book again just to be touched up on this lesson again. Mm -hmm. Just because you form your biases throughout life, like for whatever reason. And I think this book just highlights a really valuable lesson. And I'd like to just come back and learn that lesson if I ever forget it. So I'd stick with a seven. It was messy, but it seven in my eyes i'll bring it down to a six honestly <laughs> wait what were you at before a seven seven. Oh, okay um i guess yeah i do realize how messy it is um although i did like the ending which is weird because it's like the most intense but i just like things that like keep my blood going um but yeah i don't know i guess i wouldn't read it again honestly so that's why i'm bringing it down to a six i give it a ten on the on the tantrum scale, though. Yeah. <laughs> the angsty <laughs> stuff. Agreed. Yeah. A definite 10. Wait, but so, like, if you give this a 6, why would you rate the poem we read the other week a 7, then? He rated it a 9. A 9? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he rated it a 9. Because I liked it. Because he said he related Dang. to the character. He related to it, okay. man. But this character, I man, depends. like, I I can at least ration out people's intention. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> And this is nothing like the, the poem. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. Just because I was like, dude, fuck this, man. <laughs> but. All right. It's okay. I can't judge you guys based on your ratings. So. What is our next book? All right. So what is our next book, Henry? Okay. So for the second week of Booking It, we'll be reading The Wednesday Wars, um, which is my personal favorite novel by Gary D. Smith. Um, 276 pages. The Wednesday Wars, and it's um, a 2007 young adult historical fiction novel um, set in Long Island during the 67 through 68 school year. 1967, 68. So, yeah. All right. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to Booking It. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> Booking It is a storyboard production starring Henry Nguyen, Tommy Nguyen, Anthony Nguyen, and Lin Yu Huang. You can find us on YouTube and SoundCloud at Bookin' It Book Club, but until then, gotta book it!